Okay, everyone, you're very, very welcome. Uh, I must say it's a nice he evening here up in South Derry and on the screen, so hopefully the weather is as kind with you. Um, just before I introduce um, our special guest for this evening, coaches, I'm going to show this wee clip. Um, hopefully it'll play for you here. So we'll go ahead with it here. Right, um, you're all very welcome coaches, um, hopefully you'll get something out of tonight's session, I know you will. Uh, so um, before we bring Connor in, I just want to say a few things about Connor. Uh, he's had a long, I'm sure you all know him, he's had a long and distinguished career with Down and his club Kilku. He has won eight senior club championship medals as well as won the Ulster club title for the first time for his club last year. He is currently a GA coordinator in Trinity College in Dublin, a position that he's been hold there for nine years. And if things were right this year, he would be down coaching Monaghan because he's a Monaghan senior football coach presently. And uh, into his club, even uh, last year he won a, a minor championship with his club. He's won a ladies senior championship with his club also recently. And as last year he worked along Dominic Corrigan when St. Michael's and Eskillen won their first Hogan Cup. And he's only 35 years of age. And he's been coaching his club his last 17 years. So, you're very, very welcome, Connor. The first question I'm going to put you first before we start here, I would like to say Paul has already said it. Got a, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions in from the coaches that registered for the for the webinar here tonight. I have digested them as best I can, and hopefully I've covered all areas. It was just impossible maybe to ask the no, numerous questions that come in, but I think I'm going to cover most areas. So. Over that maybe two dozen questions I ask, hopefully your area will be covered. Um, and the first, before I ask Connor any of the questions that came in from you, the coaches, I would like to know, Connor, looking at that video with the under eights in Kilku, where do you start at with the block? Because they were doing diving blocks there that any senior would be proud of, but that, that can't start there, Connor. Where does it start at? Hey, uh, firstly, I'd just like to thank you for uh, inviting me on, Tony. Uh, it's a massive honour um, to be to be here tonight and to be talking with someone of the stature of yourself. Uh, listen, they were just a bunch of wee boys that um, I've had now since they were four years of age. And we just, we've been working hard on our, on our basic skills, but they're just very brave wee lads. And they're, they, 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 them wee lads will be sitting at senior training, watching every night. And they just want to be doing what the seniors are doing. And they'd be asking me to do things. And, but, but we broke it down and we, we broke it down where we started at four and five years of age, learning them that even lobbing a ball in the air and them just, uh, putting their hands in the correct position to get them um, for a block and for me it's about building confidence with them um, trying to learn them that if they connect with the ball if they block the ball at the correct position that they'll not get hurt and they'll be safe and if they can get that wee bit of confidence then it shows that they're more than capable of doing it but it takes a wee bit of bravery as well and they're brave wee lads brilliant absolutely brilliant Brilliant, Connor. Um, right, we'll move on to the questions here, and I'm going to ask the question the way it came in, uh, coaches. So it's not from me, it's from the coaches. So the first question, Connor, and this is the way the coach put it I believe the club has a club school link. And if, and if so, but well, he must know you do. What benefits to your club? Uh, having a club school link? Um, 
Uh, we, we have a brilliant school club link. Um, we're very lucky that there, I know there's like because because we're such a small club, we only have the one feeder school. Um, I would say 99% of our um, underage members go to the primary school. Maybe one or two players go to the the, the local bond school, but all of our players go through the, the all the players that won in the senior champ any of the senior championship medals or got an Ulster medal have come through the primary school. Um, so we've got great links there. Um, we're very lucky to have a brilliant principal in uh, Mrs. Musson. Um, she's been there years now, but we've just got a good connection. Um, I, I've been in the school, uh, taking the, the primary school team for 17 years now. Um, and it just worked out well that if whenever I was coaching with down that if I had time I could get to the school after schools or if we got in the morning time and it even still works brilliantly if if I can get um finished up in Dublin and I get up the road early I could just ring to the school and say can I get a class out uh of an hour free and they're very very accommodating and um, there was no male teachers in the school for a number of years there so uh, it was the club's responsibility to make sure that football stayed um, very very strong in it. Um, the teachers in it are fantastic. Um, they're great at um, following on the lesson plans maybe that I had done with them or um, or this year we had some of the wee younger senior players in, in the school taking lessons and things so that was very good as well but we are lucky now that we have such a good link for, for years our senior team would have used the interactive whiteboards in the school for our like video analysis or for our team meetings and we uh, miss Mussen all the time just would have opened the, the, the door for us and let us in late at night to do our stuff or if we needed to do stretching or anything in the in the wee hall whenever we didn't have our own facilities and we used it so it worked both ways but thankfully we have such a good relationship and I, I couldn't speak highly enough of Miss Mussen now where um, I think she's talking about retiring and um, will go a long way to get such such a good woman and um, she, she was brilliant and even going to matches and things like she she would have been super and she would say that knowledgeably like she would have let me um, have control of the boys and control of the team but also then it was important for us that me as a coach and as a club as a coach we had to understand the difference between a club and a school environment um, and that was I think we I think that's why Miss Musson enjoyed us being in so much because we were able to to move across and make sure that it you know it is a different environment and um there are pupils at the end of the day at school and they they have to be um treated like that but whenever we were there it was it was great and brilliant 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 connor absolutely brilliant um right the next one what does the club install in the young players from day one and what personal qualities are important to everyone in the club when nurturing these young players? Hey, uh, I, whenever I put that video up just on Twitter, I, it just done my heart good. I uh, I came across it in my phone from last year's summer camp and if I was to sum up one thing that we love is, it's in that wee video, a wee bit of bravery, um, we lads putting their bodies on the line and I think there was somebody wrote in under it saying if that's the highlight of your club you have a long way to go and I was like well you think a lot differently than I do <laughs> um, <laughs> but we just look for a, a good attitude um, at, at the start um, and also then like at a young age you have to remember it's you have to get the parents buy in as well there because it's not we lads have to be taken to training and so you have to get a good interaction with their parents but if they have the right attitude and they're and they're willing to work hard, brilliant, brilliant. The, the sky's the limit for them. Brilliant, brilliant, Connor. Brilliant. Next one. Has the club has the club implemented a style of play of, of a style of football from on the eight to senior? Or is it just a matter of all on the age footballers just work on their technical skills rather than having a style of play? Um I think it's a great thing that um, to practice your individual skills, but 
in the game that we love, it, it's the team that wins the game. Um, it's the team that's best coordinated. It's the it's the team that play for one another. And I think we do have a, a style of play, right? From if you watched our underage teams, you would get a sense that I love whenever people we go to wee tournaments and people see the maybe the sixes or eights or tens playing away and they say, Oh, they're they're very much like your senior team. Um we went to a Balahi tournament, a great wee tournament, an under eight tournament, um, and two or three years ago and won it. And in one of the games, the wee team scored uh, 11 palm goals. And uh, they, they should have really been kicking the ball into the net themselves, like, to be fair. But they were waiting on that actually wee pass just to flick it across, just to, just because that's what we'd be implementing in training and that. And, uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It's brilliant. not hard to see then that it's the same style. Like maybe in the Ulster final, the palm goal was something that we have worked on for years. Could could I just follow on from that, Connor? Because it was it, it came in from a few coaches. You yourself, do you have a style of play when you go to uh, different teams, or do you cut your cloth to suit the players of the opposition? Do you believe in changing the style when you, for, with different teams? I suppose uh, as a coach, you have to play the cards you're dealt. Um, Everybody would love to, and I suppose it's the big debate at the minute about, you know, playing 50, because like, Gaelic games or Gaelic football has changed an awful lot and there's maybe a lot of defensive stuff now, but I think the majority of people would like to play a, an open style brand of football and a, attack more, but if you come up against a defensive team, like I, I like to, for our boys to move the ball early and to kick the ball to the inside line and support runners off them, like that's... That would be ideal, and yes, yes. but if you come up against a, a blanket defence or a team that's a wee bit more defensively set up, you have to be very careful in the way you do that, because if you leave yourself exposed at the back um, by going all out attack, so it's became now a situation where you have to mirror, or mirror the other team and it become a game of chess yes, then, yes. but I, th I think one thing that I learned from Mickey, um, is that about concentrating on your own strengths um, is is very, very important. And um, I, I, I like to concentrate on my team. And if we can, if I feel that we can go all out and just win the game, so be yes, it. Yes. We'll, we'll play attack and football. But but as, as a coach, sometimes it's nice to be able to set your teams up in different ways. Um, and that's even, and pe people would say, oh, when, does, when does that come in? But there's no reason why... Uh, like I'll, I'll give you a quick story, Tony. We were playing in a nine-a-side primary school competition and we had come up against this wee team who were brilliantly well coached by uh, um, Paddy Hardy and Max and the Finn. And they were, they were better than us. So uh, we, they, they had stuffed us in a couple of the wee challenge matches and, that, and it came to the wee championship game. So we just decided that it wasn't fair for the wee boys to be getting stuffed yeah, all the time. Yeah, so yeah. We, just, we just decided to give them the kick out and let them try to break us down. And uh, after the match, Paddy says, I can't believe you've done that. I said, sure, it was a bit of crack learning them. And listen, if we boys can learn different things and that, sure. Absolutely. Th th there's no harm in it. Like, but of course, everybody wants to go out and play lovely open football. But horses for courses. Great. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right. Next one. Having coached at all levels and age groups, and you're still only 35 and still playing, but as I say, coaching at all levels, and I'm talking about colleges, ladies' teams, on the age club, and now senior county. What are the key messages to getting player buy-in, plus challenges that you've encountered that has developed you as a coach? Um, I think I've been very lucky that I've worked with, with great men over this past number of years. Um, I've worked under a lot of brilliant managers. Um, and I've tried to take a wee bit from each of them, but the one thing that the, the brilliant managers that I played under, I loved them, and I would have done anything for them managers. If they had asked us or our team to run to the top of Donard, we would have done it because we loved we loved them lads, or loved, loved them managers. So get trust is a brilliant thing as a coach. If your players can trust you, and they, 
once they're once that trust there, then you can the boundaries are extended all the time. I think that a lot of challenges come in then with coaches. I find it whenever I'm able to say to players, even even should it be ladies or men, I'll never ask a player to do something that I wouldn't do myself. And if you can ask, if you can ask, if you can say that to your players and they know that you're meaning that from your heart, well then they're not going to question you. They're going to understand that you're you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, some of the challenges I've faced, uh, I, I found with whenever I was coaching the ladies, that the girls were asked a lot more questions. They, they wanted a lot more stuff in detail. Um, like, for instance, if, if someone didn't make the plan, uh, team, they, they wanted to know why in great detail and, and that was a good sign of them as players but it, it meant that me as a coach I had to have my um, ducks in order because I knew I was going to be challenged on on, on things. Yes, 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 um, yes. And then just having confidence as, as a coach. Um, I listened to, I listened to a, a brilliant um, podcast yesterday with PJ McGee talking in it. Um, and he was my primary school teacher in school and he said that um, confidence is a, is a great thing in coaches and it is that you have to have confidence in your own ability and it was maybe the Monathan thing was a wee bit came out of the blue as a shock to me and some of them lads are older on me and far better players than I'll, I'll ever be but you just have to have confidence in, in yourself and know that and I think it's a good thing that if you've served your time at underage teams and you've put the work in and you've seen a lot of different scenarios um, coming to, to the, the front that you can, you've dealt with so you know that there's a lot of things that you've got um, experienced in. Brilliant Connor and you know this you're you're talking yes about yourself as a player there and and, and, and and not talking yourself up well I'm going to tell you a wee story I know I know I don't want to be talking too much because you're the man for talking to everyone I'm going to tell you a wee story here and I think he's tuned in tonight a man called Michael McDermott from Caffin uh, he's been managing a lot of teams, a good friend of mine, and he, he managed, he was managing Clare way back, I think it was 2011, Connor, if this is right, and, and the, the, the Clare played down in uh, qualifiers in Ennis, and, you, and Younes had got to the Ireland final the year before, and that was a big scalp if Clare could have turned Younes over, and I think Younes beat them by one, Younes beat them by one point, but he was telling me a story about you, Connor. you were playing corner forward, and time was up, Time it were an injury time, and Claire at attacked, and had the ball at the and, and you followed the whole way back, and seemingly he told me that you dived across the line and knocked the ball away from a ball going over the line for a goal for Claire to win the game, and you playing corner corner forward. I don't want you to comment on it because I we're not blessed with time, and I want to hear better things. From you, but but that's a true story, isn't it, Connor? Maybe I want you to com comment a wee bit then. Uh, yeah, is that true? Yeah, that, that's a true story but um, I lost the ball the ball had come into me and I had spilt it so it would have been my fault if I had went in the net maybe so that's why I was chasing brilliant absolutely brilliant brilliant right next question and this is a longish question but the question <coughs> uh, you know uh, comes to the end type of thing here Connor but I'll, I'll read it out you were coaching a minor team that won the championship last year but your club had won three in a row minor championships in 09, 10 and 11. And yes, your seniors won the championship in 09, but went on to win six in a row from 12 to 17. And then last year, winning another county title and going on to win the Ulster for the first time. The question is, Connor, uh, is how were the minors integrated into our very successful senior squad? Um. That, that team that won three minor championships in a row, as a club, we had been waiting on them lads a long time. Um, they won an under 14 A fella, uh, I think in 2006. And we had bright hopes for them. We, had, we hadn't won a senior championship at the time. And they were, they were the real prospects coming through. Now, we were lucky that we got a senior championship in 09, but we still felt that these lads were going to going to bring us to our club to a different level. Um, some of them were in the panel um, 
and then they started integrating in. But it was good work by the likes of Jim McCurry, who was able to, he was the senior manager at the time, and he was great for them young lads that he didn't put too much pressure on them, but he did, uh, he did give them a, enough scope that to, to prove themselves. And a lot of people think that sometimes younger players um, need to be held back and that, but I felt that they handled them lads very, very well. They, they came into the panel and straight away they, they, they gave us a new lease of life and they were at the, they were at the core of um, us winning um, numerous championships then and they were they were winners growing up so they were Tony yes, um, yes. and they, they brought a serious attitude to it and then this year like, like we had we had five minors on the senior panel this year and um, four of them played Three of them played in the All Ireland final, and four of them played in the in the Ulster club at some stage. Um, all four of them played in the Ulster. So for like for his first time that Mickey had seen them lads, all four, the four of them lads all finished the Ulster league final in January or February, whenever it was. Um, Mickey was brilliant. Yes. With, Mickey was very good with them as well. That he he gave them great confidence that but he knew when to put them in and when to take them out and um, i suppose he's a, he's a man with fast experience so that was brilliant but the one thing i loved about mickey the odd time during the year because maybe and it, it was great for me mickey was brilliant that he helped me for time management and all he would have said he would have let the seniors and the minors maybe train together the odd night and that gave the lads a taste of yes. what was expected from them and then over the years we've we've tried really hard to have good under 16 and good minor managers and have people that have either played senior football or are, are playing senior football involved so that they're setting the standards for them lads so then it's a like a quick transition into the to integrate them into the seniors because they're already at that that level hopefully Brilliant, brilliant, Connor. Brilliant. Uh, in fact, I think you're, you're answering a few of the questions that's come up later, which which will be good because there's a lot of questions and we're going to try to get through them because I think it's right for us to do our best for the coaches who's asked these questions that have joined us. So no, number six, Connor, with on the age football. Well, this is a, uh, this is a good question, Connor. Here with on the age football, how do you get or what do you do to get? better engagement with parents as these are the people you're communicating with for thinning and matches more often than not messages are ignored and you can spend a lot of time prompting and chasing i suppose that's that's the big one at underage is getting parents to buy in and um, you can doesn't matter how good of a coach you have or and it, <laughs> if the parents don't bring the children to their training like the like we boys and girls at five six seven eight they, they have to be left to training and they have to be left on time and i think a, a lot of people ask me that like how do we get to buy in and maybe we're just a wee bit we are a wee bit different in Kilku in a lot of ways but you don't miss training and um, you don't come late to training and if parents are if parents are not bringing their child in that or the wee boys, I would just ask them straight out. Um, but we, we have a we have a new uh, there was a new estate built in Kilcoo, and a family came in who weren't weren't probably from a footballing background, and the wee boy was a good player, um, a very good player, and he hadn't been to a couple of the training sessions, and he missed a couple of the wee blitzes in the Saturday morning. So I said to their said to the mommy or to, at the training, I says, uh, if you don't mind me asking, where Where's your son been? She says, Connor, I'll tell you the truth. He uh, Saturday morning's my only morning off that I get to go shopping. And I says, Mrs. That's not the way it works about this place. You don't nothing comes in the road of in the road of football. You, everything else, you go shopping late at night. Tesco's is open twenty four hours down the road. Don't be don't be letting them miss training. And brilliant, brilliant. we were. I, I just think that it is. It is very important to get the parents to buy in, but not too much. I'm, I'm not a big believer in having parents involved with, with teams that their sons are playing on. It, it's very hard. It's very few parents can do it. Um, 
yes, it's okay for them to show good support and all, but you still have to have your coaches there that know their stuff. But if, if your parents trust you and they know that you would do anything for their, their wee boys, I hope that my parents with my under sixes and eights know that I would do absolutely anything for them on the pitch or even off the pitch. Then once they know there's that trust there again, that they know that they're 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 going to great, give you great. that loyalty. Great, Connor. Great. Right. Uh, this is the way it was asked, Connor. So I'm going to ask you this: Connor often states that there's always a foot pass on. What do we risk encouraging players nowadays to kick the ball to the detriment of team possession just because it's fashionable? Uh, that man wouldn't need to be playing at half forward line or midfield line for Kilku because he would be getting a tune from me, maybe not kicking it in. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think this is my this is my worry about about the game that because we've gone stats mad and possession being a uh, fatal all the time, but. People are maybe, I think coaches, I think the thing that us as coaches are maybe doing and it's wrong is putting a lot of pressure on our players and ma making them a wee bit fearful of being able to express themselves. And that comes from an underage right through to senior level and I've experienced that myself. Um, that if you're, if you're afraid that a coach is going to come in at half time or a manager is going to come in at half time and say you kick the ball away so many times that Whenever that killer passes on, or whatever you need to deliver an eye needle pass, you're maybe that wee bit of doubt in your head, and that's whenever it goes wrong. I do believe, even and people say, "Oh, there's not a kick pass on whenever the blanket defence is, is is set up." But for me to be able to kick the ball from um, side to side instead of three hand passes, one kick pass will will move a defence or will pull a sweeper across um, quicker than a couple of hand passes will. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't mean a long drive there, Tony. I don't mean like a, a 60 yard pass. As an inside forward, I, I love a wee 25, 30 yard dink pass, as we would talk about. Yes. Um, that if I have lost my man for a split second, that ball is there on my chest in a second instead of a longer pass where a defender can maybe make up the space. But as coaches, we should. The best players, listen, P Peter Canavan was a genius because. He played off the cuff an awful lot. Um, David Clifford, at the minute, plays off the cuff, and I think we should. But in children, we should be allowing our, our children to um, play off the cuff and try new things and um, be special. We're never going to have any more Peter Canemans or David Cliffords if we're as coaches if we're um, telling them what to do all the time and keeping them um, putting like a leash on them, keeping them restrained. Let them be yeah. special and let them. I love saying to my wee players, show me a bit of magic. I love saying to me under eights, somebody show me a bit of magic. Somebody throw a dummy and rifler in the net or somebody dispossess a man very cleanly. And we boys and girls being able to demonstrate a bit of magic, for me as a coach, that's the one thing that does my heart good. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, there's a couple of questions coming in here too, Connor, but I'm going to move on because I had two dozen questions at the start. So... The, sec the next one I think you would answer, Connor, but I'm going to give it out uh, for, the for, the, for the coach who put, it, uh, who, who put the question on, but I think it's a very, very short answer. I think the answer, yeah, you've said it already. Do you believe it's good coaching policy and a club to allow minors play senior football? Uh, nice and short, Connor. I think you've already answered it. Uh, just very quick to you. If they're good enough, if I, I was a young lad, I wouldn't want somebody holding me back because of my age. If they're at the right age and they're good enough to play, and you've got as long as the manager looks after them and knows when to put them in, not maybe in a local derby or something like that, putting them in at the right time and breaking them in is 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 no harm in it, in my opinion. Right. Grand Connor, grand. Right, next one. If you have a strong on the age group that end up <coughs> playing a lot of games where they are a lot stronger than the opposition. Aside from rot rotating players, how do you challenge them to improve and get better? Um, 
I, I've maybe had um, involved in any year like that um, going past and it was up to us as coaches then to really, because then in them games they learned bad habits I felt, so they needed to be challenged and we actually we actually travelled um, around Ulster playing challenge matches against uh, the best possible teams we could get up, come up against. Um, this was an under-16 team I was talking about. We would have played um, our minors and maybe a couple of reserves. Boys joined in together just to, to get a good game, to, to really challenge us and that. And then in different games, because nowadays like, you have to be the sort of complete footballer, a cornerback to be able to kick a point as good as a corner forward maybe. In different games, we would have just swapped the defenders and forwards in some matches just to yes, um, yes. expose them to different areas of the field. And I, I felt that was a brilliant thing for... Both sets of players, not just to experience playing in opposition, but for if they were a forward, to know how a defender thought in cer certain circumstances, maybe would stick to that player the next time he went into a forward, into his forward position, saying, "Well, a defender would have think thought like this. Aye, that's the way to get around it." And I, th I think that's a good way of doing it. But you have to challenge them, and you have to be very hard on them, and it's it's not an easy thing to do because. You don't like whenever you're maybe stuffing another team and then you have to take your your key players off. So away from them matches, you have to be doing a lot of work with your team. Very good. Very good, Connor. Next one. We are a small rural club. And with that, and with that, we have a wide gap between the talent of the stronger and weaker players in each age group. Do you have any good advice on accommodating both? in the session, especially games that allow both to pro progress with their skills? Um, I, I know like the goal games is is brilliant for this because the, the one player can't dominate, but in like my opinion, like the goal games has been going since we were underage really, because I remember us playing one touch football and pass and move. It's just about, I would put restrictions on my, my the, the, the player that's better developed, but you have to remember sometimes whenever you're focusing on bringing the, the lower level players up, you take away, you're not challenging that stronger player and that's not fair than them either. So you have to get a nice balance. So sometimes it's good to challenge them maybe um, on, weaker, on your weaker side or uh, my, my trick is to, to, is to talk to the older player or to the, yes, yes. More, the more experienced player and the better player yes, yes. and say, listen, I want to see how many of these wee boys you can bring into the game tonight. And I want you to bring wee Jimmy into the game. And if he gets a goal tonight, I'm giving your team six points instead of three, if you get him a goal. Very so that wee player has to work himself into position and you'll see him, he'll maybe go past him and he'll wheel back round to bring him into the game. And then he'll start to encourage him too, because some, Sometimes them, them weaker players maybe, it's just confidence. It's not it's not maybe skill level. Sometimes it's confidence and whenever the batter player can just get the ball and put it in the net, that, that, that's fine. But I explained to the wee boys very importantly at this, at underage level. It's okay being the best player at underage, but whenever you need to win, should it be an under 16 or a minor or a senior county title, you need everybody in your team. So your corner board that you don't need at under eights and under tens, you're going to need them up the ladder a wee bit. So don't be forgetting about them because Brilliant. you need 15 to win the game. Brilliant, Connor. Next one. I'm fair drilling you the night boy. The next one here. Uh, right. What's the, what's the most effective way to teach players to make the right decision on the ball? Do you believe the structured regimented drills work in, the, in that regard, or does it need to be unstructured and allow players to figure it out for themselves with guidance on what they're doing, right or wrong? Hey, that, 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 that's a very good question. I see a lot of this at the minute. A lot of um, skills being practiced against the wall, um, a lot of skills being done statically. But you don't do that in a game. I find it better to be able to help wee boys till 
to practice in a match situation. And that, and, and I don't mean actually, in, in a game scenario, I don't mean in a full out match. Should it be a, a three on three, a three on two, challenge them in different ways and asking them to figure it out themselves. Um, one team gets many, so many passes um, and that gets them a goal. Um, putting ch putting the, the, the children in an environment where they're at their own level. I love doing that in training. And that maybe touches a wee bit on the last one as well, Tony. Yes, that yeah. in, the, in your trainings, if I was putting out wee small sided games, uh, like three on threes, I would make sure I would be putting six wee lads who were close to the one level. So then they're getting more touches and they're getting more involved in that and really challenging then the stronger boys and letting them, letting them at it. But it's it's matches where where they learn. Um, do you know the thing that I find we boys learn the most from is watching other games. And I've just got an insight into this only because because of my own wee boys are starting to play a wee bit, um, and they're interested in it. One of my, my second wee man, we were out in the garden just kicking about. The next thing he threw this wee dummy in, and I says to him, "Where did you learn this?" And he was like, oh, that's an old mulligan dummy. And I said, uh -huh, right. Really and they go, old mulligan doesn't play anymore. Do you know what I mean? But uh -huh. he had watched it somewhere and he had seen it. And it, I know like a lot of our wee boys at, at the club here would be down sitting watching senior training. And, and I would maybe give them homework some nights before a Friday night match saying, right, I want you to pick a player and I want you to uh, come back and tell me some of the things that he done well or how maybe one of the Brannigans defended or what we Jerome done on a forward line. And these were wee boys at seven, eight, nine. Like they're wee sponges. But I found they were able to learn key skills by watching yes, older yes. players play. But the question was about the skill. I, I'm not a fan of this skill driven stuff. I'm more a fan of, listen, we learned playing in a field Yes. You know, knocking lumps out of one another and you learn to not to hold on to the ball too long and when to give it and when not to give it. So I think there's no harm in the old school. Brilliant. Brilliant, Connor. Brilliant. These next couple of questions, maybe the lumpy is um they're should well are just straight for hopefully straightforward for you. Just to let you know, I see a, a, a text in here from a coach at County Leitrim who's really enjoying your your chat tonight, Connor. So uh uh, it's hopefully it's gone down very well. Um, co number the next one, Connor. Coaches who has influenced your development as a player and a coach, and why? Um, I suppose I, I maybe start from a uh, a younger age up there. Uh, maybe one of the men would be Jerome Johnson. Um, he would be the father of uh, the three boys that play in the senior team at the minute. Um, yes, no, no. Uh, he would have took underage teams and he would have played as an inside forward. And uh, he would have had a good effect um, on me as a player. And, and he's, even as a coach, like um, he he would have been the manager of the under-14 team that won the Fela. And myself and Aidan Brannigan and Donald Keane would have been along with them and would have learned a lot from him um, through that. Um, and then, it, it just recently, like I've started working with a man, Barney McAvoy. Um, I've been with him maybe this past ten years with the under sixteens and the minors, and um, he would have managed our seniors for for a long period of time. They were men within my own club that would that would have um, would have helped steer me in in a good direction. Uh, Jim Jim McCurry give me give me my senior debut, uh -huh. and. Uh, I played under him for maybe nine years, and then I played. I played under him at Down as well. He he was fantastic, um, probably one one of the best coaches I've ever I've ever worked with, um, training wise. And I learned an awful as a coach. I learned an awful lot from him because he never had a he never had the same the session the same. And then nine years, we never hardly done the same thing. Um, played a lot of football and. Um, was a was a very good man in, in that capacity. Uh, then I suppose like having the opportunity to work with Mickey this year. Um, I've maybe, it, Brian McGaver was a was a brilliant man before I go to Mickey. Like Brian McGaver was 
a man who worked with with Kilku on down and Paul as well. But Brian Brian particularly learnt me a lot about like, players loved Brian, absolutely loved him, and whenever Brian spoke, you listened, and he was just a very very passionate man, and um, I took a lot from him. Uh, then, as I said, the opportunity to, to the opportunity to play for Mickey was was unbelievable. But to learn from him as a as a coach was invaluable. Like the stuff I learned in a year from himself and Conleith and Paul. Uh, Mickey just has a. It's very hard to put your finger on it. What Mickey has. Yes. Yes. He is just. A, he's a very special man. And, but the, I remember one of the very first Ulster League matches, um, something went wrong and he just says, he says, you didn't try that the next time. And I says, ah, I didn't really, he says, I didn't come here to see you playing within yourself. And I was like, and I was like, ah, oh. and he give, he give us a great freedom and t him and Jim were very similar. Now, they give us a, they give the players a lot of, uh, a lot of freedom to make decisions and to show a lot of leadership and uh, they were just Mickey, Mickey was to learn from really? Mickey to be able to to be able to go back to them man Tony uh, uh, and ask them questions. Uh, Do you know now if I have if I have trouble or anything I can go back and ask them man questions and use their knowledge as well. I think that's very good. Brilliant, uh, brilliant Connor. I had. Uh... I had the honour of playing on the Mickey myself, uh, and it was it was a real pleasure. Um, this this next question, Connor, uh, you maybe already have answered. So uh, because uh, we still because we're right for you to go through, but we'll 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 look at this in here anyway because it was put in. Do senior players help coach on the uh, help or, or coach on the age teams? I think you've already said uh, y y yes that have you. Um, yeah, that, that that's something that um, is very important with us. We have a we have a senior player involved in every team, at least one, um, and that's from the sixes, eights, um, right through to minor level. Um, we feel that's very important. Now, it is hard for lads because they, they have so much commitment um, themselves. But it's uh, I just see a different wee attitude in the wee lads at training whenever the senior players are around and. Um, if they're watching them play on a Friday night, and, uh, and we, we've been lucky that we've, we've we've had a wee bit of success, so they, they do have that serious respect for them. And but it's it's key now. If if you have somebody that they knows playing at a high level, or and I think that's a very important thing at uh, an age of uh, the 13, 14, 15, 16, where we lads are, you know, they're getting we attitudes, they're getting um, they're they're turning into to young men. If if they have senior players speaking to them, they'll have an awful lot of respect there. So you, you, we we find we have no issues at all. Very good, Connor. Very good. Uh, next one, as a senior player and on the age coach within the club, what's the best advice you would give for coaching your on the age players? Um, the best bit of advice and. I tell, I coach this from a very young age. Is that, and we were, we we have been learnt this, so I was learnt it, and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to continue on the good work that someone else has done, and there's great men within the club that are doing brilliant work as well. You talk, you hear this saying about leaving the jersey in a better place, but every time you pull on that jersey, you have to have that bit of pride in it. You have to. You have to love it, and um, and you want to to do it justice every day that you go out. And we we have high standards in, in Kilku, and that's from should it be underage right through to senior level. And you have to meet them standards every time you pull that jersey on. And should that be for the best player, or should that be for a young lad that's just developing? You have to. You can have all the technical coaching terms in the world, Tony. But if you don't have a bit of heart and a bit of love for your club and the jersey you're pulling uh, on, then you, you know, it doesn't matter if you're the best player. You're you're not going to go too far. So you have to start with that foundation of 
um, work rate and good attitude for me is something that I would take over a brilliant player any day of the week. And that's uh, that's been proven in our senior team. I think that sometimes we haven't been the best, the best, um, most skillful footballers, but we have definitely been um, hard workers. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Right, uh, short one here. Uh, best lessons or tips for coaches? Uh, trust your gut. Uh, you're normally right with your first, your first uh, thoughts, um, but never underestimate a team. I've got caught once in a life uh, underestimating a team. They don't underestimate anybody, and make sure you plan for you plan for every game as if it was a championship final. Because if you put the hours of work in in all them um, smaller matches, I'm a great believer in you'll get that wee bit of luck whenever you whenever you need it if you put the work in. Right. 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 Next one. Tips on creating full forward separation. You play you play in there yourself. Yeah. Suppose if you've got cornerbacks like yourself, maybe to uh, take a chop at you, you'll, uh, you'll you'll not be long learning to separate. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I, it's it's a very that's a very hard skill to coach now, um, and I, I've had that um, in different coaching courses over the past number of years. But again, I'll go back to the one where I said that if players players need to go and watch certain players. Um, from behind the net, I remember um, going to Tyrone matches and standing behind the net and just watching Canavan and his runs. And I was amazed at why this man was making three or four runs and never getting the ball. But the more you watch, the more you learn from him. And for the two people for me that were the best two men in Ireland at making full forward separation was Peter Canavan and Andy Moran. Um, and Andy Moran's runs were, were outstanding. And, a full forward should be always thinking that you mightn't get my opinion of a full forward is he shouldn't really be the the ultimate scorer you should be always thinking about yeah making yes. making space and um, maybe dragging a defender out of the road and but you're yeah you have to have an understanding with with your teammates for to have good full forward runs and good separate planning and good separation that they know without even roaring or shouting, they just know by your run or by your intent if you want it or not. And like, I, would have, I would have a good wee understanding with Paul Davlin in Kilku, um, that he would know if I was making a wee dummy run that I wouldn't want it. Um, and he would maybe delay the pass that wee bit to maybe he was able to cut back into the space where I wanted the ball and that. But it's just about learning your players to, to make, and it's not easy. Like, Gone are the days where the full forward just stands there. Now, as soon as that ball hits your full back's hands or your half back's hands, you need to be on the move, starting to try to lose them or to make a wee bit of space for someone else. So it's 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 them hard runs, but if you can create that wee bit of separation, them hard runs are well worth it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right, uh, one line answer, Connor, for this one. What is the most important skill in Gaelic football? Uh, scoring goals. That's it. That's it. Move. Well, move on. You've answered. Right. Um, the next one, Connor. Best again. Oh, oh. Best tackling drill to get intensity increased. Yeah. Uh, Maybe two lanes or three lanes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you maybe come and watch some of the Kilku senior training. <laughs> um, oh, it, all tackling drills are the same. It's, it's about the players. We can do the most simplest tackling drills, but if you have one of the Brannigans hanging off you in a tackling drill, it's intense. That's the truth. Uh, but the, the, the best tackling drill for me, I, I'm not a fan of a box. A lot of people do like box stuff, but in a game, a player can't 
you're tackling someone and it's sort of a wee bit false because the player can't stay within the box in the game. So just yes. one-on-one, going straight down his throat and learning your defender to, to move his feet and shuffle his feet. Um, and maybe like three defenders in a row. And once you get past the first one, the, thir- the first defender has to wheel back in. And always the, the maybe the player always getting a shot at the end of it because... You know, that's that's a very important skill to yes. have defensively ways that you can position yourself to delay them in, in, a, in a shot. Yes. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. I think you've answered this next one here. <coughs> but, uh, I'm going to give it anyway. Um, and uh, if you can, I'm going to give it to you. How did Mickey Morn build that sense of identity and community within Kilku, or was it already there? Um, like, I, I speak very, like, as you know, I speak so highly of Mickey. Um, but I think it would be unfair till the previous managers of all the work and the underage managers and the club as a whole to say that there wasn't something there already. Um, w- we were very, very close over this past number of years till, listen, we've been chasing that dream for a time. Of an Ulster title and time was running out for a lot of us but we were a tight-knit unit but um excuse me Mickey Mickey just brought that special ingredient of boys just loved Mickey and he had just this aura about him and he for me he was the missing piece of the jigsaw um, and, and he just fitted in but it, there was a serious bond and a serious tightness there before that but he definitely added to it and he, he, he gave us a talk one night in a dressing room and I've never heard anything like it in my life. It was, this, the hers were standing in the back of your neck and we just knew that that man yes. was the right man for us. But he was he was the last piece of the jigsaw, Tony, if that's the best way, that's the best way for me to put that. A lot of good yes. work was done, but he was the last piece of the jigsaw. Uh, brilliant, Connor. Next one. Any tips mentally for preparing a, uh, to get a team mentally right for preparing a team for that next big challenge? Um, and this comes from the experience of working with players and playing, playing with the lads. There's, there's players. Not one glove fits everybody here, so. There's going to be players in that room, and I have been in change rooms where we've had sports psychologists, and there's half the boys are solely focused focused in on it and taking every word they say, and the other half are away with the fairies. <laughs> so they just, I think that I think that has to be a very individual thing for coaches to to work on. If it works for a player, great. But if it if somebody doesn't need it then don't force something on a player. But uh, personally, I like it. I, I, I've i worked with a, with, with a couple of great men like uh, John Kramer and Kieran Kearney. Um, I would hold, hold very highly. Um, and both have helped me um, numerous times in my playing career. Um, should it be whenever you weren't ha- having a good run, should it be just maybe about your preparation or your visualisation? And But... If, if, it, if it works for a player, brilliant. But as coaches, don't get too hung up on maybe forcing everybody in it. I have learned that, hopefully myself, going forward in my coaching career, that it's not it's not the be-all and end-all, but if it, it certainly can help some individuals. Brilliant, Connor. We're, 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 we're in the home state. Still a few to go, and there's a couple here, and I'm aware it's 25 past eight. I don't want to over, overdo it, but we're, we're not overdoing it. I think everybody's enjoying it, but... Um, our next one, our next one, Connor, is what's your biggest regret since you became a coach? Yeah, thinking that I could play all out attack and football against a blanket. <laughs> um, uh, I just think that I, I'm alert the hard way, like. Yeah, but yeah, I just think that you have to be, you have to be very careful sometimes that you don't get caught in trying to, you have to be, as a coach, I've learned to be a wee bit more adaptable 
and to change things um because at the end of the day you want to win the game and sometimes you might have to do that ugly and uh, maybe at the start of things i thought that we were just going to go out and score nine or ten goals a game and even if a team was playing that way but no to be to be adaptable and not to think that you can just um, play the one certain Absol- way. absolutely brilliant connor great right next one uh what is your sporting what is your sporting greatest moment uh, oh. uh-huh. <laughs> this year like this it once tony i couldn't explain to you what we have put in over i first came on the senior panel in 2002 and our goal was to win a senior championship and like mayor bridge at that time had a brilliant brilliant team um but once we got a couple of championships then our our dream turned to could we ever get over the line in ulster and like our lives went on hold like my family would tell you that like we had it wasn't holidays there wasn't a uh, family weddings were missed functions were missed um and that was from every player in that panel they made serious sacrifices and just to be able to get over the line that day in oma um i'll die a happy man in a sporting terms and um, just knowing seeing the smiles and my wee man's faces and older men in Kilku who'd never thought they would see the day and oh, it was just a brilliant day and that it'll take an awful lot to beat that great right connor best piece of advice you have best piece of advice you have been that you have been given yes the best piece of advice you have been given uh, to to express your capabilities, to uh, trust yourself, and this is all into one, to trust yourself in your, and trust your own ability. Um, as, as a player, if you don't be afraid to, don't be playing within yourself, and as coaches, don't be, don't be um, coaching your teams to uh, not play with that flair and, and to let players play off the cuff, Tony. Let them play, let them show themselves. Very right. good. Uh, Connor, there's still more here, another couple more here. Um, brilliant. Um, Connor, your thoughts towards player development versus a more traditional one and attitude at on the age level? I did I say that. Connor, your thoughts towards player development versus a more traditional one and attitude at on the age level? Right, uh, but if my under eights go out to play, I still would like them to win. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so it, it's very important, and I touched on something at the start, and I think this is important um, that we don't forget this as coaches. I say it about a school atmosphere and a club atmosphere. I think that it's it's important at underage to make sure that if my wee team gets beat. I, I don't see the harm in telling them, listen lads, we lost today because the other team was better. I, I think that sometimes if we don't do that, we're, we're not learning, giving them even life skills um, that they fail in life. I'll put it this way to you. If me and you are tossing a coin, Tony, and you say heads and I say tails and you win, I'm walking away saying, oh, I can't believe he beat me. <laughs> um, I'm so the same. <laughs> it's, you know, and it's, but it's, it's very important that as coaches, we, we learn our, we learn our young players to win uh, with, with, win well, win with good manners and good grace and um, to shake hands after the match. But I see an awful lot of young children nowadays that whenever they get beat, this huffing and crying and a wee bit of sulking, like I would nip that in the bud straight away. Should you win or should you lose? You shake your player's hand um, and say, if it's a good battle, we'll, we'll go to battle again at some time in the future. But 
Like if we boys are out playing in the garden, like they still want to win the game. They still want to. They still want to win, and I don't think that's a bad thing to have. But I wouldn't lose this the development for the sake of win at all costs, particularly at underage. Like listen, it's 14, 16, It starts to change a wee bit, but you still can have that winning atmosphere within. It's a healthy competitiveness within your squad, but. It's not a win at all cost effort at your sixes, eight, tens, and twelves for me. It is about making sure that their their skill development. But if our wee boys get beat, and I thought that they hadn't worked hard, or they hadn't emptied the tank, and they hadn't um, played well hard for the jersey, I, I still would challenge them on that. Great, and um, you know, uh, great answer, Connor. Great answer, right? Uh, we're into a few questions that has been texted in, Connor. And as I say, I, I'd like when when coaches says text in, we'll do our best to through as many as we can here, coaches. I'm sorry if I don't hit on your question. I apologise in advance. Um, um, right, there's one here. Two years ago, we played your Kilku on the eight team and on rare tournament. They gave us a lesson on how to go for the ball with conviction. How do you instil that? And them so young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's. I think a lot of the time, uh, it's just with with them watching. Maybe I think it comes back to that um, standards in the club that we expect we boys to 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 be committed and to to be brave and. Like there is wee players that aren't that are going to develop later and maybe confidence wise, but I think it's by playing matches and in the wee matches having that wee bit of competitiveness in the matches and training and um, learns them to uh, just to be that wee bit more uh, challenging than that. But it's listen, that's a very nice comment for someone to say, and I'd be real happy um, to know that and. Uh, that, that people would think of um, our wee team that way, but it's just it's important that uh, if it didn't see a wee lad going for the ball, like the, and there is wee boys maybe who have issues at that age, maybe and should it be bravery or should it be confidence? And that's up to me as a coach then the next night at training. And if if some of my wee boys weren't that confident going for the ball, see if I would I would maneuver and talk to my better players saying, listen, let him win it this time, or maybe the wee man on him, I would say, let him win it, and as soon as he won it. I would go off the rails. I would be going mad. I'd be jumping about as if he won the All Ireland and clapping and roaring and saying, "What a brilliant take that be, man!" That's the way I want you to go for the ball. Great stuff. And I think that's our. We have a part to play in that too. Like uh, the best coaches I have seen are like uh, at underage are like animated. Um, they're going mad. They're a wee bit crazy as soon as that their their session starts. And you give them you give them that. Uh, you give them that sort of confidence too, like. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I'm just moving on here quickly through them. Sh uh, Shane, uh, Shane's your first name. I don't know. Shane, you've text, you've texted on one there. Shane, I think Connor has already answered that. As a club, at what age do you try to promote a winning mentality, or do you focus on developing kill two team ethic? I think Connor has said yes. You don't want it all costs, but you always send the wee lads out to do the very best. So uh, hopefully, Shane, you're you're happy enough with that. Uh, and the next one here. Good evening, lads. Great podcast. I am with an under-11 girls team in Anna Duff in County Leitrim. They have always wanted to try new training drills. What do you suggest? Well, for under-11, uh, Connor, there. Uh, any suggestions there for under-11 girls? Um, I, the, the one thing I would say with the, with the girls is that I, I would be in, inclined to make sure that uh, I, I do a lot of kicking um, my two sisters would take um, we underage teams in Kilku and I'll be telling them to make sure that they're doing a lot of kicking because if you look at the top end of ladies now, um, going to the days where they just this straight punt pass, um, they're sort of coming more into different styles of kicking, should it be the inside of the foot or the outside of the foot and uh, I would do a lot of wee drills and shooting with, with, uh, with the girls because even though they might be shooting, you're still getting their kick passing in and they maybe wouldn't realise, they maybe wouldn't get sick of kick passing then because they're getting a shot at the end of it. So doing wee things like that uh, and always, oh, eh, whenever you're doing that and the more you do if you're shooting, 
put wee incentives like who can be the first to get to 10 because children love having that incentive till and that comes back to the got we winning thing again like they love having that wee thing who can be the first till to get to that number and wee small games like that but always give them an end target and and whenever you're doing don't be doing straight line drills as much try to incorporate more uh right. drills with like a shot or something at the end of it you know class act you're a class act connor that's all i can say uh we're going through here now uh how do you make a, an on 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 confident player confident how do you make an unconfident player confident um i i have a couple of wee players in in our underage groups who maybe wouldn't be maybe have um some learning difficulties and maybe through that they just don't have the confidence or just as a player they just don't have the confidence but i love that situation as a coach there's nothing i love more than seeing a bunch of wee boys or a wee lad um and i'm talking about lads here but it goes for boys and girls it's just my own it's in my head the way i coach uh, there's nothing I love to see more than that development of that wee lad who's maybe afraid to block a ball and then like seeing that wee in that wee block and exercise there's one of them wee boys in that wee block and exercise and he would have been um maybe down the pack in order like wouldn't been as brave and so we done this thing and I watched this in American football Um, I thought to use all their sports to and I seen this thing where they were hitting tackle bags and they lined all their players up so the whole squad all 20 of them 10 at each side and whoever was holding the tackle bag and each player run up the middle of the line and hit the tackle bag but while that player was running up the middle of the line all the other players were going mad clapping and roaring and cheering and supporting them so i changed that into my wee blocking one at the end of training some nights and so like the wee boys loved it they loved getting to roar and shout and all the parents were looking down as what was going on so all these wee boys were shouting go on tony that's that good stuff tony go on <laughs> and i was like i was saying right lads this is the this is to block the ball to win the to win the county final for kilku or to win the all ireland for down or wherever it should be and a, at the start, I put wee mats out so they didn't fall on the hard ground. I put wee like soft mats out. So even if they didn't get the block in, and like I was kicking the ball, so I knew which player was coming that I could hold it a wee bit like right. if Fury got there. And it just things like that. That's a wee example of how to build the build their confidence. Brilliant. Now there's another question that you've answered, Connor, but I'm gonna give it out because you've answered it. And uh, 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 it's that's a question that you've 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 give praise to all your coaches that have that have coached you on the years. The question would you like to change the order of your previous managers was uh, ideas you would like to have had earlier or later in your team development. I think you've 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 explained that well enough, Connor, that everybody everybody was so important to you in the club. Uh well well you put put you over to a wee second there. Okay. Listen, um I think our club got um we, we got our ultimate goal this year and uh, we can be very thankful for that so we're just grateful with it we learned things of every from our under six managers right through and everybody helped us along the way and guided us as, and like as players we're very thankful for that from our our first principal in the primary school right till mickey moore and all the men through that played a small part in that and i think after the ulster final i tried to make contact with all them every all them tony and just to say thank you for the small part they played and brilliant. for achieving our dreams so brilliant brilliant connor you see jim mccurry had different training sessions over the nine years but do you think repetition is key also to de develop tactical aspects of the game and technically for the players have you got that uh, yeah um that, that, that's a good question um uh, I read Alex Alex Ferguson's book and he talked about repetition and like he was a brilliant manager. So there is a place for it, um, particularly maybe coming up till a bit, well, with older teams coming up to big games and you want to play a certain way or set up a certain style, it, it's hard to beat a bit of repetition um, to make sure that it just gets um, in the players' mindsets. I think repetition and that kind of aspect is good, but not in drill after drill after drill similar every night i think it's a uh, i think it's a okay. player it's better to mix it up but maybe systems and style of play repetition is is a very meaningful 
way to go about things. Great. A couple of questions. Has coaching changed you from, from 10 years ago? And where do you see yourself going in the future and in, then in, 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 in the county management? Or oh, you're not thinking about that yet? <laughs> uh, I, this lockdown has maybe changed a lot of things. Uh, but listen, I do enjoy I do enjoy um, coaching. I love coaching and I love uh, I love being on the training field. And I know it is hard now, and um, particularly at a high level, it's very hard for to be able to train a team and to manage a team. And different ones of this argument with me, they say it's impossible to do both. Uh, listen, I worked with in my head too the best men ever, um, Jim McCurry and Mickey Moore, and both managed the team and, and and done training sessions so maybe not as much training but um they, they still they, they still coached on the field like loads both them coached loads in the field and both them managed the team so i think it is possible and um i still would have aspirations of um i still would like to like to manage further down the line and listen i'm very thankful like to bandy for giving me the opportunity to go in along with monaghan and and learn and I, I'm very young in that, so it's a great opportunity to learn at the likes of himself, who's been a, an experienced manager for years, and the likes of, to work along with Pete Donnelly. Has, uh, I've learned loads in, in this past number of months. Right, a couple of questions to finish, Connor. And how are you keeping your engagement up with the on the eight team during these times with no field training sessions? Finding hard with engagement via app parents group had, could you, uh, had set them weekly skills challenges, but the number of videos of children doing skills challenges has dropped dramatically from week one. We're on we're on week nine skills challenges this week. Thanks. Just looking at ideas of working with all dates in these times, or what do you say to that, Connor? Um, I suppose it, it is hard, and it's hard because especially now with maybe parents going back to work and that, and it was a wee bit of novelty at the start, but you have to trust that they. I know, like I'm sending videos into my WhatsApp groups of, but I'm not sending skills in. I, I'm sending we, excuse me, we matches in of maybe the the boys playing in the garden or different wee games, you know, like rob the nest with a skill in it or a uh, like an axiosy square game with a uh, with a skill in it. I, I'm not sending much static stuff in because I think young lads would get bored very quickly of that, and it's not challenging them enough. Uh, I trust in my heart that I know if I had a list of my wee lads there that 95% of them wee lads are kicking ball. So if you if you have that, um, you are lucky in a way. But if it again it's the parents, I I I would challenge the parents and say, uh, listen, this is a quick tip. Give a give a prize, give a give a prize for a draw of a like a set of Morphe's gloves or something like that there for. All the people that send the videos in this week, you'll not be too long getting your videos in. Brilliant, brilliant. Last question, Connor. Karina has text here to say, fantastic presentation, lads. Thanks. Was so much opportunity for young players to develop skills across a range of sports these days. Is there an age where you start looking for your players to start focusing on one? Um. Uh, we only have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, listen, it, it's it's no harm. Um, if some of the wee lads were playing basketball, um, was brilliant for them. Some of the wee lads go till uh, some of the mixed martial arts or gymnastics or things, and all them things are good. But they, they still should have number one should still be um, high up their list. Football should be high up their list from a very young age, but. Getting more sport specific whenever they're 12, 13, 14 is definitely whenever they should be honing in on their skills. But there's no harm still in doing different things and trying different sports and all them skills, skills help. Okay, hey, what can I say? What can I say, uh, Connor? Thank you so, so, so much. Um, when I phoned you a few weeks ago, to, uh, would you do this webinar for us? Uh, you didn't hesitate and I'll tell you one thing, Connor. You didn't disappoint. It was absolutely fabulous, and I'm sure the people that was on the night would agree with me. 
and you are open and honest and passionate and all those things that you need to get on in life. So, Connor, thank you so much. And before we go, uh, coaches, just to, as you know, anybody that was on last week, we had our first webinar last week, the also GA on fitness with the ball through games and game related activities. We had Connor this week. Next week, um, we'll be doing another uh, session on games and activities to improve scoring and defensive opportunities. So myself and Paul and Gareth will be back next week again and we'll be delivering a session today on games and activities to improve scoring defensive opportunities. It'll be, it'll be, a, so hopefully you'll get some out of the YouTube then next week at 7.30. This session is recorded, as Paul says, and it'll be sent out in a few days to you. And um, I think, I think that's it. Hey, uh, thank you for tuning in, coaches. Hopefully, You'll go back to your clubs and please God, uh, times will improve shortly and we'll get back out onto, onto the GA field, which we love so much, which we're reared with and which we just, it's our, it's our life. So uh, thank you, coaches. Thank you, Connor, Paul and Gareth. Great session. Thank you.